Welcome back. As we begin our discussion of energy and metabolism in cells, first we have to talk about a few ideas to get some basic terminology clear in our minds so that you'll be able to understand it when we talk about the more integrated views of this process. And the first one of these ideas I'd like to talk about is the idea of redox or reduction and oxidation. And I want to focus on a molecule called NAD, a molecule we're going to see used as an electron carrier within the cell. All right, first of all, this oxidation reduction idea is the idea that we're talking about in biological systems, energy production uh, is going to be tied to the exchange of electrons, hydrogen atoms between molecules. So we're talking about oxidation and reduction as types of reactions or processes that link biological systems together. And what we're going to find is that if we have one molecule that's being oxidized, there's going to be some other molecule that simultaneously is being reduced. So you're going to want to look for that as we talk about these different ideas of exchanging components of molecules. Now, biological redox reactions, we're going to see in particular in this catabolic process we're going to be talking about, we're going to be discussing processes like cellular respiration and fermentation, catabolic processes. And these catabolic processes are used to extract energy, right? capture energy from the nutritional molecules, the nutritive molecules an organism takes in. We're going to focus on the discussion uh, on carbohydrates, but later we'll talk about how other nutritive molecules can also be broken down in energy derived from them. Now, one thing to remember about what we're going to be discussing is that for each hydrogen atom that we talk about, you want to think about each hydrogen atom in terms of its composition. It's one electron and one proton. So when we talk about redox reactions exchanging electrons in biological systems, we're going to see that as packages of material, hydrogen atoms. So we're going to talk about molecules exchanging hydrogen atoms or molecules exchanging electrons. So in a simple sense, think about it this way. For each hydrogen atom that moves from one molecule to another, it's really, in essence, one electron and one proton that are being moved from one substance to another. All right, so movement of electrons between molecules will be involved in redox reactions. In biological systems, we usually see those electrons being moved around in packages of hydrogen atoms. So we'll talk about hydrogen atoms being moved around as being components of oxidation and reduction reactions. All right, so first of all, let's define some of these terms. If we have oxidation, we're saying that a particular molecule is either losing electrons or it's losing hydrogen atoms, okay? Now, you want to make sure you get that clear in your mind before we move on to later discussions. So, oxidation, the removal of electrons or hydrogen atoms. What we expect to find associated with this is that there's also going to be release of energy during this loss of electrons or loss of hydrogen atoms. So, we would expect these to be exergonic reactions. In reduction, we're doing the reverse of that, the addition of electrons or hydrogen atoms to a molecule. Now, I know that sounds strange to call something reduction when you're adding electrons. But it's a vestige of an older idea, the way of thinking about this. And if you think about it for a moment, if I add electrons to something, I'm adding negative charges, I'm reducing its charge. So this whole terminology of reduction goes back to that idea, that when things gain electrons, their charge gets reduced. All right, so recap, reduction in our context is going to be whenever we see a molecule that is gaining electrons or gaining hydrogen atoms from somewhere. Now, we usually think of this as being that the molecule that's gaining those electrons is gaining some energy. So you might think of this as being an endergonic type of process, okay? Give yourself a moment to get these terms straight in your mind before we discuss them further. All right, let's take a look at a quick example. Notice. These blobs on this slide are not trying to indicate any particular molecule, but just to try to get these two terms related to each other. Notice we have these two substances, A and B, and what we're saying is that substance A is losing an electron that's going and attaching to substance B. We would say that substance B has experienced reduction. 
we'd say that molecule A, substance A, has experienced oxidation. Substance A has lost electrons, oxidation. Substance B has gained electrons, reduction. Notice that we call this a redox reaction because both processes are occurring simultaneously. One molecule, one substance being oxidized, the other substance experiencing reduction. Also notice that we could talk about the molecules in terms of their before and after state. For example, I could refer to A on the left hand side of the illustration as being in its reduced state. A on the right hand side of the illustration is in its oxidized state. If I focus on substance B, I could say substance B on the left hand side of this reaction is in its oxidized state. Substance B on the right hand side of this representation is now in its reduced state. So you want to be careful how these terms are used and make sure you can apply them correctly to the different substances. Take a look at the different pictures in your book of these kinds of processes. See if you can use the terminology to describe this oxidation reduction process. Now, what we're going to see in the cell is, we're going to see that many of these oxidation and reduction reactions are going to be tied to the use of molecules called electron carriers. NAD, NADP, FAD. I'm going to refer to them as electron delivery trucks. You can think of them as molecules that have the capacity to pick up electrons, pick up hydrogen atoms, at one location in the cell and then deliver them, drop them off at some other location in the cell. Now NAD, NADP, and FAD are all dinucleotide molecules. And if you remember back when we talked about nucleotides in terms of the discussion of organic molecules, we said that this was one of the key functions of nucleotides to act as electron carrier molecules. So we expect them to be molecules that can pick up electrons at one location drop them off at another location. Another way to say that is what? We expect to see them be reduced at one location within the cell, move to another location in the cell, and then experience oxidation. Gain electrons one place, drop the electrons off someplace else. Now where are we going to see the primary site where these are delivered? It's going to be a group of protein molecules called an electron transport chain. And we'll talk about those more later, but we're going to see that this electron transport chain is the place where we expect to find these electron carriers experiencing their oxidation, losing their hydrogens, losing their electrons to the electron transport chain. Also make note of the idea that these nucleotides, these dinucleotide electron carriers, you may also see classified as coenzymes. It's common for them to attach short term to an enzyme that's helping a chemical reaction take place. And in the process of helping that chemical reaction take place, they become reduced or they become oxidized. So NAD, NADP, FAD, electron carrier molecules, electron delivery trucks. Take a look at this representation. Notice now we're suggesting that we have a little bit more detail in our representation of oxidation and reduction. On the left hand side of the illustration, notice that we have this organic molecule. We're not defining which organic molecule it is. You'll see some representations of them as you look at the pathways for these different types of chemical reactions later in future illustrations. But notice what we're suggesting that that molecule is losing. It's losing two hydrogen atoms. Remember what a hydrogen atom is. It's one proton and one electron. So we could say that the organic molecule is losing a pair of hydrogen ions and a pair of electrons. Make sure you think about that. So we would say that this organic molecule is experiencing oxidation. It's losing hydrogen atoms. Who's picking them up? NAD, that coenzyme electron delivery truck that we just talked about. Since NAD is going to pick up that pair of electrons and pick up that pair of hydrogen ions, we would say that NAD is becoming reduced or it's experiencing reduction. So notice that in particular over here, we have the reduced form of the electron carrier. Notice also that what NAD is picking up is a package of materials. Think of it as a pair of electrons 
and a pair of hydrogen ions. Okay? That's the materials that are being loaded onto the NAD. You might expect that we're going to see this process be reversed at another location, right? Remember we said that this NAD molecule, the package of materials that it's carrying, are going to be dropped off at the electron transport chain. This NADH plus the H plus that it's pulling along with it, a hydrogen ion, those materials will be delivered to the proteins of the electron transport chain. And then we'll see NADH turn back into NAD. Okay? Look for that. Make sure you find that in some of your illustrations. Here's another way we could think of representing this. This is a little bit more detailed representation. Now we're taking a look at a particular organic molecule and we're focusing on one part of it. Notice there's a portion of this molecule that has a hydrogen attached to one side of the carbon and a hydroxyl group attached to the other side of the molecule here and here. If that molecule experiences oxidation then we're saying it's going to lose some of its hydrogen. In this case Notice we're saying that it loses two hydrogen atoms. Well, where do they go? Those two hydrogen atoms, remember how we said we could think of them, as a package of two protons, two hydrogen ions, and two electrons are going to get added to NAD. Here. NAD plus grabs a hold of its two hydrogen atoms, two electrons and two hydrogen ions, and experiences reduction to be turned into NADH, and then it also pulls along with it that additional H+, that hydrogen ion. So here's a representation with a little more detail at the molecular level showing how the oxidation of an organic molecule releasing hydrogen atoms can be tied to the reduction of NAD, an electron carrier, as it picks up those hydrogen atoms. Okay? Oxidation reduction. So, we looked at, in a general sense, the idea of redox. Reduction processes, oxidation processes. We said that reduction was gaining. We said that oxidation was losing. It didn't seem to make sense at the surface, but make sure you carefully cover these words. Oxidation, how are we going to define that? In the biological sense, we're going to be looking for molecules, that are losing hydrogen atoms. In the process, they're also doing what? Losing electrons. So oxidation is a tied to loss of hydrogen atoms. Reduction is the converse of that. Reduction is going to be when an organic molecule is gaining hydrogen atoms. In the process, it's gaining electrons as well. So biological redox reactions are that exchange of hydrogen atoms that occurs between molecules. The key molecule that acts as the intermediary between these processes are these electron carriers. Remember what we said they were? NAD, NADP, and FAD. And we looked at NAD in particular, and we said that it could pick up, carry, the equivalent of two hydrogen atoms picked up at one location, dropped off at another location. Now, by the way, NADP and FAD also carry the same quantity of material. So all three of these electron carriers have the capacity to carry the equivalent of two hydrogen atoms. You're going to see that this is going to come into play in a number of locations throughout the process of cellular respiration that we're going to talk about in future lectures. Thanks very much for your attention. Talk to you next time.